So welcome back uh, to our next session on uh, mindfulness. And this one is about um, noticing the good things in life. And we've started by listening to the treasure of pleasure meditation from Mindfulness for Health uh, Breathworks, which is available on SoundCloud and read by the lovely Vidya Mala Birch, um, who's got a gorgeous voice. So that, that's helped enormously already <laughs> listening to that. So if you want to stop here and go back and, and listen to that, then then go for it. Um, but just a, a recap, really, on the, the treasure of pleasure meditation um, is that um, the idea is that we uh, in the meditation try to actively seek out small and subtle um, pleasurable experiences that are coming in through the senses um, so not often we can just ignore what's coming in through our senses unless it's very loud and it kind of interrupts our flow of thinking you know very loud sounds very very uh, strong smells etc um, and in this meditation you're encouraged to actively seek things that are coming in through your senses that are pleasant even if they're small things like absence of pain or absence of hunger or um, softness of skin you know, those kinds of things so a lovely lovely um, meditation to do which will lead very nicely uh, into the subject matter of the day so um, I don't know if uh, Anne or Leslie you'd like to just You've got any observations about the meditation and things that arose for you in the meditation? I had a very nice experience in that meditation. Suddenly, because I'm sitting by the window, suddenly the sun came out from behind the cloud and I just felt it on me full blast. And I thought, stay with it. Don't just think, oh, yes, the sun's shining. Stay with it. Mm. Yeah, it was a different experience. So I think often we do notice good things, but we don't stay with them. Yeah. We let them go as quickly as they came. And we yes. you know, stay with them longer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the theory is, is that you have to stay with things because we're, our, our brain is wired to ignore good things if they're yes. fleeting. Um, so we have to stay with them longer mm -hmm. to, to get mm -hmm. them embedded. Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. Feeling of sun on you, isn't that lovely? Yes, yes very good. Mm. <laughs> very good. How about um, you, Anne? I was, I was just, um, I was a little rushed when I came uh, to join this uh, session. Um, so it was really very welcome just to sit and think. And what's interesting, um, I... I was thinking, I focused particularly on my hands. They were held in my lap and they were, they were quite cold. And I thought, oh, well, well not to worry because um, it doesn't matter. That's the sensation. I, I'll concentrate on my hands feeling cold and they were clasping each other. Um, and after a while, it wasn't a case of, oh, oh they're, that's uncomfortable, they're cold. It was just that sensation, that, that pleasant coolness that was there. And uh, that was quite interesting. It was quite interesting to do uh, because normally, I, I, oh, I, I need to, because I, I wear a lot of fingerless gloves just to give myself a little bit of extra warmth. And um, I, th I was thinking initially, um, oh, I, I should have put some gloves on for this. And, and then, no, no, actually, no, that's, that's quite all right. That, that feels quite cool and pleasant. And um, I focused on those for quite a considerable time. And it's true, that is. I, they feel lots warmer now, so I don't know how that's <laughs> But I'm quite happy about it. <laughs> Fabulous. It, it, it's looking at things that... Um, in a way, I would have seen sort of as I'm moving on through the day, oh, cold hands, quick, put something on. Mm. But in actual fact, sitting there thinking about it, totally 
totally different experience and very positive actually wow very positive wow yeah fabulous <laughs> And I was sitting, um, I've, I've just had a coffee. So I was sitting with the, with the taste of coffee, um, which is nice, very nice. Yes. yes. Yeah. Just sitting with that. And um, I think what's interesting about these meditations is that each time you do them, something just subtly different jumps out at you um, about the meditation experience. Um, so I noticed certain things that um, were being said in the meditation, like maybe you notice a relief of acceptance. So as you embrace all of your experiences and sensations, maybe you feel a sense of relief at that, that you're not, um, and I quote, locked into a battle with life. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's lovely. And yeah. It's one of those concepts that, again, you know, you keep on coming back to it, coming back to it, coming back to it, and it kind of makes more and more sense um, of accepting. Because I've also got a bit of a pain in my shoulder this morning. Had a had a massage yesterday, and, and somebody put their elbow on my shoulder. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know, I'm 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 there. I'm feeling that, um, but I'm also enjoying the taste of coffee in my mouth so it's um mm. yeah it is nice and sometimes it can feel like you're locked in a battle with life can't it as you're thinking yeah. oh I've got cold hands again or, <laughs> yes well it's true that's exactly what I normally do and yeah. I thought no no I'm not going to think that let's yeah. just think uh, oh yes actually they're not that cold they're cool they're cool but they're not that cold and then you suddenly start a little sensation of think one finger on top of another finger and just mm. something as slight as that so yeah 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 yes fabulous so yeah an encouragement to seek out experiences mm. um that are pleasure and look at things afresh because we we get into very set ways of responding to the world don't we so um looking at things through a, a, a new perspective is i find that very exciting yes yeah. So let's move on to some concepts um, underpinning today's topic. So there we go. Can you yeah. see that clearly? Yes, thank you. Yeah, fabulous. So, um, put it into read mode oh, same okay there we go so noticing uh, good things so starting off with thinking about um, concept number one which is um, the negativity bias that we as human beings have got so just a reminder of, of what that is um, that as humans, we tend to give more importance to negative experiences than to positive or even to neutral ones. And that's known as the negativity bias. We focus on the negative, even when the negative experience is small or if it's of no significance or it's of no consequence, um, because we are, um, we are wired up to, to do that. <clears throat> so it's said to be a result of evolution that human beings have um, developed to pay more attention to bad things, to overlook good things. So um, earlier in human history, the theory is, is that paying attention to bad and dangerous negative things was literally a, a matter of life or death. And um, when we ran this course the first time we talked about well is that any different now <laughs> mm. um it, you know it's a very black and white thing isn't it to say well you know we're not under such threat anymore um threat perhaps comes in in different ways but um the idea is that and you know if we are living in reasonably comfortable um circumstances 
we do have the luxury of not having to just be on our guard all the time because we've got a, a comfortable home um, which is fairly secure and, and so on and so forth. Obviously, um, people who are living in terrible conditions are, are still in that state. But, um, but you know, if we're living in favourable circumstances, then we do, we are able to not just be looking over our shoulder all the time at mm. what negative thing is going to happen. Um, so obviously, human beings were attuned um, to danger uh, for their survival. And people who were the most attuned were the most likely to survive, um, you know, as, as um, in earlier human history and, you know, sadly, in some circumstances today as well. So we've got an inherited negativity bias, um, which kind of explains why we find it hard to ignore negative events. So negative events happen like, uh, for example, traffic accidents. Now, we don't really have to stop and watch that or focus on it um, because, you know, in today's life, then it, it will be sorted by somebody else. Mm -hmm. But even as you know, even if that is the case, everything's already sorted. So like there was a there was an, an accident on the motorway on my way back up from Dorset recently and the traffic was backed up for miles and miles and miles, even though the accident had been dealt with and um, the cars involved were in a lay-by, ambulance service was there, all the rest of it. But then people were going past it slowly because they they had to have a good look at it. Rubbernecking, isn't it called? Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, that, that is the way we've been wired, is, ooh, something bad's going to happen. We've got to focus on it and, and, and assess the threat and just kind of get involved with it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, things like... Uh, watching bad news on TV, reading bad news in social media, reading bad news in the papers, last viral outbreak, wars, um, disasters, economic crises, uh, all the rest of it. Um, you know, we can, I mean, there's plenty of those sources in, in daily life and we can find ourselves, you know, focusing a lot on that and, and becoming quite overwhelmed by it. Yeah. Um, and in day-to-day -day life, you know, somebody might say something harsh or critical um, or your friend might say something um, and that you take to be a snub um, and it plays over and over and over again in your mind. And uh, even if then we experience in our day lots of good events, our negativity bias can cause us to focus mm -hmm. only on something bad so something bad from the news something bad that somebody said the way somebody looked at you somebody pushed in front of you in a queue you know whatever it is um, and it can le lead us to ruminate on small things worry about things that we've said oh did i did i say the right thing have i made a bad impression um or we might linger on negative comments like oh, oh, what did they what did they mean by that and oh mm -hmm. oh am, am i a bad person and so on and so forth. And as well as noticing negative things more easily, we also remember, we remember negative things more easily as well because of the way uh, we as humans are wired up. So yeah, negativity bias. Um, the first time we did that, uh, we asked, does, it, does this concept resonate? And can you think of other examples of the negativity bias in action? So any any fresh thoughts on, on that question? I, I think this negativity bias, I think the more you do mindfulness, the more you're aware of it. Mm -hmm. and, and you notice that, you know, that, that we're bombarded with negative stuff. You say through the news, through the papers, Everywhere we are bombarded with negative stuff. Mm. Very little positive stuff that comes through the media. It's all yeah. negative. But I yes. think through mindfulness, you recognise that. Yeah. And recognise it's for me now to find the pleasant things, to balance that negativity bias, get, get the scale balanced with some positive stuff. And I think yeah. as you do mindfulness, you recognize the importance of that 
you know, of not giving so much time to the negative stuff, you know, trying to see the, you know, the pleasant things. Yeah. yeah. That, that's yeah. how I feel the change is coming. You know, it's, uh, it's hopeful. It is hopeful. Do you feel like there's a bit of a permission element, as in you give yourself permission not to just dwell on scary negative things mm -hmm. all the time, but permission to actually think, well, I am yeah. going to try and focus a little bit on the positive as well. Yeah. And, and can you almost feel like a duty, yeah. can't it? To Oh, well, yeah. you know, there's so much suffering, so much negativity. Yeah. If, if I try to find the positive, maybe I'm being a bit flippant or, you know, maybe I'm not doing my duty to other human beings to yeah. know what's going on or... But if we don't try and do that positive and pleasant stuff, the balance is going to go, it's just all going to be negative. I must admit, if you listen to a news report, uh, which I don't do very often because you get to the point where they follow the same format, um, and it's all the, if you like, negative information, one yeah. report after another, and it's disaster here, or what's gone wrong there, or incorrect reporting, and, and hasn't so-and-so made a mistake here? They should have done this, and they should. And then, if you're really lucky, right at the end of the report, there'll be something a little bit light-hearted. That was which allows the new, it's usually the radio I'm listening to, but it allows the um, newsreader to have a little chuckle at the end. And really, why couldn't they find more of that? Why is there just <laughs> one little incidence of it? And, yeah. and it's that sort of thing that you, I mean, that's just me evaluating it, but a lot of people don't even evaluate, they just listen to it. And mm. that's what they're soaked in. And mm. all this negativity and the first response to a lot of things is negative and it's such a shame. But mm. as you say, um, as you say, Leslie, when you start um, taking on the idea of thinking through, being mindful about all this, you begin to either make a judgment well I don't think I want to listen to the news today I don't want to have that negativity or you listen to it and you let it float away you know you look at the little morsels the little scraps of something positive that are in there somewhere um, uh, and it, do, it does make you look at the bigger picture in a totally different way um, yeah. You are focused and perhaps looking for the things that are um, positive, hope, as you said, hopeful, um, and thinking, no, I haven't got to absorb all this stuff. I haven't got to take it on. I can let it go. Mm. Yeah. I, th I think absorbing is, is a, or soaking, being soaked yeah. by. I think, I think that, you know, it's a very good way to put it. Mm. Sometimes, I mean, it can feel like that, can't it? You can oh, yeah. get soaked yeah. by, <laughs> by the media and by, you know, all uh, being attuned to negativity. Mm. So, yeah. Um, uh, and I'm liking what you're saying, Leslie, about mindfulness can offer us just a little way of stepping back again mm -hmm. from all of that and noticing and choosing what we take part in and choosing what we don't and what we need as a, as a person um, to get the balance right in life. Mm. So we've probably already um, skipped ahead to this, but um, pitfalls of the negativity bias then. Mm. Um, negativity bias may have helped us to survive as a, as a human species in evolutionary terms. Yeah. Um, but we don't have to be constantly negative all the time for our survival on the whole. Like I say, some people in terrible mm -hmm. circumstances, you know, but if we're having a fairly comfortable life, we don't have to be always looking for the negative. We can give ourselves permission to look for some positive as well as a, as a counteraction. Um, because the trouble with a constant negativity bias is that it can have a very detrimental effect on mm. our quality of life. 
Mm. Um, it can have um, impacts on our relationships, um, our stress levels, our mental wealth, uh, mental well-being, and um, our general sense of uh, of, of well-being. Mm. So yes, it can reduce our likelihood of feeling happy and peaceful and contented because that when there's so much negativity there, how can we mm. <laughs> feel happy and peaceful and contented? So it can make us feel like the world and everything in it is dominated by threat and danger. And it can make us, um, it can make it harder for us to be patient with other people and forgiving towards others mm. as we're feeling so negative and so um, uh, so down and so soaked by negativity ourselves. So negativity bias affecting our quality of life. Any, anything more to be said on that then? No, I think you were right in saying mindfulness does um, give you permission to choose not to go down that road. If, if you can manage not to, Mm. Yeah. Give you permission to do that. Yeah. 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 It's um it's it's difficult because um if you it's almost as though you've got to find a um a pathway that accepts both you, you can't be all totally positive because yeah. Um, people will become rather alarmed um, <laughs> because <laughs> it's, it, it's not in in our as a human being's nature to yeah. think all the world is wonderful because yeah. then that and it, it, it's being able to sift through but perhaps focus more on the positive um, mm. but you do have to walk a fine line for the for the um, interaction that you're going to have with other human beings yes. um, because yes. they, they've got to see that it's reassuring when someone behaves in that great big umbrella we call a normal way um, we can't skip through the daisies every day of our life <laughs> um, so you know it's uh, it's finding that uh, that happy medium but yes, if we go too much onto the negative side, then that's when the, the depressions and the, uh, the disastrous element um, becomes part of life. It is uh, certainly uh, makes it makes the mindfulness, the whole process of mindfulness um, help to um, absorb the positive to take that positive element and um, push the other to the side without letting go of it completely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And in, in, <clears throat> in our relationships with others, um, I mean, if we're always just really gloomy and really negative, then yeah, uh, we, we may find people suddenly mm. make excuses not to spend time with us. Mm. <laughs> yeah. As you say, that you know, if, if you're totally the opposite, um, and, and, and especially if somebody's going through a hard time, you know, mm. yeah. you know it's, it's, it's probably nice that you can find positive things um, for them as well, um, yeah. but not in a, in a blasé kind of way. Mm. Yeah. Um, okay, so balancing then so we've already talked about balancing the negativity bias that we've got mm. um, so the theory behind that is that the human brain has the ability to change and adapt as a result of where we place our attention and our experiences which is quite interesting mm. uh, so neuroplasticity means that the brain is um, ever capable of putting down new pathways in the brain. So if your brain is used to going down negative channels, you've got the wiring there, we can actually rebuild mm -hmm. <laughs> our wiring to, to seek out um, positive things as well, which is, which is great. I, I find this concept really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So um, because we've got this lovely ability, then we can learn to balance 
the brain's negativity bias by training it to become more attuned to positive emotions like joy and interest and contentment and pride and love and subtle, 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 subtle stuff like we were looking for in the meditation. Mm -hmm. And by directing more of our attention towards positive events and feelings, we can begin to address the asymmetry. <laughs> so to get more mm -hmm. symmetry in our lives, more balance, as we were saying before, um, between the negative and the positive in life. Mm -hmm. So it, um, it comes down to a process of actively seeking out the pleasant and letting in the good, giving ourselves permission, as we've mm -hmm. said um, before. So if we begin to direct more of our conscious attention towards positive events and feelings and sensations, we can build practices into our daily lives uh, that can help us to, mm -hmm. to redress the balance. So actively building on the positive. So it's actively seeking out pleasant and good things in life and then holding them in awareness, which is what you were saying earlier on, Leslie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do, you know, lots and lots of things present to our senses all the time, don't they? <clears throat> but mm -hmm. um, we can be too busy thinking about that negative thing somebody just said to notice the sunshine on our skin. Well, we kind of notice it in the back of our mind somewhere, but we don't yeah. actively think, oh, that, that's really nice. I'm going to really focus on that. Yeah. Um, so holding them in awareness, um, turning towards them, being accepting, choosing to, to embrace them, um, those positive experiences that, that are out there, no matter how subtle they are, or they're in there, in your body, in, you know, that's coming in through your senses. So uh, the theory is, is that, you know, it's a mindfulness muscle again, isn't it? And the more we do it, um, the more skillful and experienced we become at doing that. So it suggests that you seek them out, you know, half a dozen times a day. Mm -hmm. Or when you think about it, or take time to notice um, the pleasant things in your day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. Um. The longer we hold our awareness of the positive, uh, whatever it is, the more emotionally stimulating it is, the stronger the trace in our memory. So tasting good coffee, um, yeah. like I mentioned earlier on, savouring the sight of a lovely sunset, or the sound of an unexpected compliment, and turning it into a good experience. Notice it and savour it. I like that word, savour yeah. it. Because like you say, um, we may, you know, we may have felt the sun on our skin, but maybe we haven't savoured, maybe we don't savour it. Because like I say, we're too busy plotting, planning, fixing things or, or thinking about negative stuff. So you can do this ritually, you know, you can take time in your day or you can make time for reflection before falling asleep. Um, and apparently the brain is considerably more receptive to new learning just before we fall asleep. So it can be a thing. I know that some people have it in their practice to think of three, you know, positive things that have happened during the day before they go to sleep. And then, you know, the brain can be churning that over while you're sleeping. Um, and so people wake up in the morning and think, right, okay, let's think of three positive things that happened yesterday and kind of setting the tone for the day, which is mm. quite nice. So and I, how do you currently do it then, to, turning your attention to positive events and feelings and what more sort of things can we do in our day-to-day -day lives? I, th I think I'm right in saying the brain can actually only do one actual thing at a time. So while you are engaged in something positive and pleasant, there's no room for a negative thing as well. Mm. I, think, I think that's the case. So while you are absorbed in a, a pleasant experience and a positive one, you know, there isn't room for the negative one to, to come in. Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. can focus on that. Yeah, yeah, they do say that, don't they? I think I think that's right. Yes, yeah. that we think we can multitask, but I think the theory is that actually we're just doing lots of things and we're focusing on one thing at a time. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
probably giving it a few seconds thought and feeling very stressed by <laughs> doing whatever yeah. it is we're doing. I must admit, I've, I've kept a, a diary for absolutely years. And that's the last thing I do um, before I go to sleep is to write my diary. Um, it's not a small one. I've got quite a, a, um, a, a large section to write in. Um, I, I have to fill it. That's the only thing that I, I have to fill that section. I can't possibly leave any blank lines. So everything goes down during the day uh, and things. But it's the lovely thing is, unless it's been uh, something quite dramatic that has happened or upsetting that's happened, I, I search through and find all the positive things in the day and write them down. And I, I've only, it, I've not thought of it at all um, like that, even though I've sat down and I've done my meditation and I've thought about the positive. Um, but I'm actually, those are all the things that are going through my mind when I write. And I do look for the positive, unless, as I say, something's happened and I'm having a bit of a negative moment. <laughs> but then I try to find something good, even if it's as simple as today, the sun and the wind dried the washing. It was smelt yeah. lovely. <laughs> mm -hmm. Something yeah. simple like that. Mm -hmm. but, and the only, the only problem with the diary, uh, the diaries, is I have bags and bags of diaries, and I don't really know what I'm going to do with them all. <laughs> Publish the man. <laughs> no, they're not that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> they are for me, and they're 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 lovely because I can look back. Uh, I can look back and uh, oh yes, I remember. Oh, that was a oh that was a lovely day, and that immediately gives me something to think about. Um, but I can't. I I really can't settle down to sleep unless I've written. I've written my, my review of the day, if you like. Oh, dear. And I have you always included positive things? Have you actively sort of thought? I do, yes. I do do that. I do do that. Uh, it's interesting looking at some of my teenage diaries because they, mm. were, they were often negative. <laughs> and I look at those and think, oh, dear, I remember that. How embarrassing. <laughs> 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 but you know, it, that's just because it's something. I'm, I'm, I've got diaries going back to when I was thirteen. Oh so, wow! You know, <laughs> but can you imagine the state of my loft with bags of diaries over there? Oh dear, not to worry. How lovely! But that is a really good. That's a really good way of of reviewing the day. Well, I mm. find it a good way of reviewing the day. Um, uh, and and sometimes you haven't well can you imagine what the lockdown diaries were that was when I had to go around looking for the birds in the hedge and and look at the flowers here and uh, there wasn't a lot going on but yeah. that was when I focused on very small things uh, yeah. about the day and, and and what the weather had been like and I'd sat in the garden and I'd listened to the birds you know it, it was mm -hmm. it's things like that um uh, and and that is very that's a, quite a comforting experience. But occasionally, you know, there are just times that everything becomes quite negative, and you have to force yourself into looking for the positive. You've got mm. to sit there and think, okay, today I've spent most of the day worrying about that, worrying about that, ringing up about this. What did I do, or what happened that was was good, you know, and. Because you don't want all that negativity in a diary, but uh, I find it really helpful because it make it makes you think about it. Um, because I'm putting it down, and then when I finish, uh, you know, you sit and you, um, well, you lie and you um, think it over. Because I always write my diary in bed. So, wow. And uh, on some mindfulness courses, they encourage you to keep um, a diary like a gratitude diary or a treasure of pleasure diary or whatever, um, you know, for that purpose, mm. which um, could be another technique. 
Yeah. Hmm. I've never done that, but I think I may I may do that. I might try that journaling. Yeah. Mm, journaling. I, yeah. yeah. I'll try that. Yeah. And I, I have to say, I have to have now, I've got, I think it's fussy in my old age. I have to have the right sort of um, space for each day. And some diaries, and you can understand it, they were, they were for a working week. And so Saturday and Sunday haven't got as much space. Well, that's no good. No. Saturday and Sunday are just as important as any other day in the week. So yeah. there's a great search for the right diary. Ah. I'm all right. I've got next year, so we're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think, I think you can buy ready-made um journals you know mindfulness yeah. journals yeah. Uh, online yeah. if you know yeah they're very popular at the moment very popular i was looking mm. at some the other day yeah. very um very good yeah i guess as well you can develop habits like well every time i take the dogs out for a walk every time i go for a walk i'm going to actively seek out pleasant things on my walk yeah um that's you know, so I I I try and do that um, when I'm out with the dogs, looking at the sky, looking at the trees, the changing seasons, noticing plants and flowers, and you know, or the changing of the leaves, or you know, whatever's going on. Um, I try and do that um, as long as my dogs aren't too distracting; they don't get up to too much mischief. <laughs> <laughs> They're fun to watch, aren't they? Dogs. They are. They, they, they are. are. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. Are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, lovely. So um, we will leave it there for today. Then. So thank you once again thank you. for um, noticing thank the good you. things with me, and um, I look forward to the next instalment, which is going to be kindfulness. Um, and compassion which is another lovely topic so mm. hope to see you again for that thank you thank you very much thank you bye bye bye, -bye.